live. What's up, everybody? We are going live and going to try something new and, and test a few things out here. Um, I've got uh, Southeastern Wildlife Expo coming up next week. And on Friday, I think it's at 3 p.m. in the Charleston Place Hotel, we do a thing called Quick Draw, where artists have an hour to complete uh, painting start to finish in front of the crowd. Everybody can walk around, you know, watch the artists work and everything. And then right after that, they auction those pieces off in the in the hotel ballroom. So it's pretty cool. People find it really entertaining. As an artist, it's kind of nerve wracking. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things I signed up years ago to do it just to get outside my comfort zone and try it new and not have any idea what I was doing. And not that I have any more idea now. <laughs> but uh, uh, we're just doing a little test run here. And this is what I'm going to paint. Um, it's uh, some cardinals that I mocked up. You can see that there um, in Photoshop, took some stock photos and combined them together into a small 9 by 12 composition. And just for a little fun, little trial test run going live and the quick draw, I'm going to go through my quick draw. So I'm going to knock this thing out in about an hour. So I typically like to sketch everything out. This is a very, very, very rough sketch. Um, just to get, just to get a little bit of, of an idea here. Um, and then I'll throw down an underpainting. This has got probably too much burnt sienna in it for what I want to do here, but it'll work okay for now. Lee's life of Kajos. Oh, Elias, what's up, man? So what I want to do on here is just cover up a lot of the canvas. This is just like a, a prime board. Usually I prep all my own stuff, but this one just came right off the right off the shelf. And this is uh, prime with acrylic gesso. So it soaks up pretty quick. This under, this layer underneath will dry pretty quick on me. And then the next step is I'll just lay in a bunch of darks. One thing that I have liked about learning to paint quicker, <clears throat> but forcing myself to paint quicker, is you just don't have a whole lot of time to screw with stuff that's not important. So details that aren't important, features that aren't important, you just flat out don't have time to do them. And that tends to make your other work better.
Okay. How do we start? T20? We've been on six minutes live on YouTube. Someone just said State Bird of West Virginia. Sweet. Didn't know that. My um, high school and mascot was the Cardinals. I don't know if that has anything to do in Illinois, but it's ain't State Bird or anything, but. You've got people from everywhere coming on here. So First thing I like to do is lay in darks. Might be a little, might be a little too dark later on. And usually it's easy at this phase too to figure out if I've jacked up my drawing if the proportions are off anywhere, which they are. But I can fix that. One thing I like about her tail, it's kind of like, it's kind of thin and 
slender and a little bit more feminine. But I painted it as a big fat blob earlier. So now I can go in and revise that shape with the blue. There's a guy named D. Seth 01. He said, I couldn't help but notice the hanging gobbler mount back there. Super cool. Thank you, yeah, man. <clears throat> I actually shot that bird about a half a mile behind my studio back here. In one of my honey holes. That hunt is actually on YouTube, ironically. There was a college kid named Josh Lawler who was um, coming up here for his senior project in school. He was a, a film student, and we shot we shot several pieces of video, but we shot a spring turkey hunt one time, and it happened to be a Bird that a heavy bird that <clears throat> had really good spurs, so I got him mounted. When I was at the Turkey Federation in in Edgefield, uh, John Brown, one of our video guys. He had probably the coolest turkey hunt I've ever seen. It was a bird hanging by one leg like that. Um, but it was on a on a longhorn from a Texas longhorn. I was always jealous of that map. It was pretty cool. Big nice Rio. He said he heard the first gobble in the morning yesterday in West Virginia. That is awesome. You saw seven gobblers this morning, or how many you saw? Um, I saw seven in the field. Only one was strutting. Of course, I had to stop and honk at him and how hoot screw with him. <laughs> it's hard to pass a bunch of field birds this time of year and not screw with them, not do something at them. See if they'll gobble, and they didn't. So, who's having turkeys that are those are come season? I'm sorry because I screwed with them. But I was up. Um, I went for a run about a week ago, early, and heard a turkey gobble. Usually around here, when it gets to be like 50s and 30s weather, consistently, we'll, we'll start hearing some 30s out there. B Hunting said, do you paint me predators? Um, I have not. I haven't painted a lot. Um, I have... Uh, uh, 
fox or uh, uh, I've painted some coyotes and foxes and stuff in the past, but it is definitely something I'd like to get more into. I feel like if I'm painting them always crunched for time, my go-to is like deer and turkey and stuff. But as I get more time, I'd like to branch out a little bit more. And also it was like never a big predator hunter when I was growing up, but uh, I'd like to get into that more too. He said he hasn't seen any recent predator paintings. He said it'd be cool to see a coyote or a fox scene with some turkeys. Yep. I had the idea. Um, we were on a family vacation in Nashville. My parents, my parents still live in Illinois. My brother and his wife and kids are in Kansas City, and we got an Airbnb and like met halfway in Nashville one year. And uh, we were at some state park or something, and I saw a really cool, like, mossy oak covered ledge. And I thought it'd be really cool to have turkeys up top, and then a bobcat or a coyote or something stalking them underneath. When I was at Turkey Federation, they had some really cool Native American paintings that were like that, of like turkeys strutting in a field and um, like Cherokee Indians or something stalking them. It was pretty sweet. Cool. We've had about 15 to 20 people live this whole time. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just the first round, you know. Once they know they'll be back and you can like pre plan it, then get a bunch of people to pop in. Somebody asked about the NWTF. When's the last time you've been there? To the show or to headquarters? The NWTF the convention. Uh, man, it's been like a decade. Um, I started going to um, Southeastern Wildlife Expo um, 10 years ago, and it sucks because I, I wish I could do both, but they're always on the same weekend. And, um, you know, I got started, my first job out of college was at the Turkey Federation, and that's kind of my people, and there's a lot of people in the industry that, you know, I miss, I'd love to see them. And, you know, unfortunately, like, a lot of times that's the only time you see them is at a trade show. And so there's a lot of people I just don't get the chance to see anymore because 
I don't go to a turkey bed anymore. So I guess to answer that one, if usually like it'll work out in leap years and stuff to where they might be a weekend apart. And if they ever are, I'm definitely gonna go back. Kim used to go there and work it with me when we were like, we were just dating then. And we loved it, but one year, I'll never forget, we uh, we got put next to a goose call company. And man, those high school boys loved to come out there and try to prove to the girl they had on their arm how good they could blow a goose call. And it got really freaking old hearing goose calls. After about day two, Kim was like, I'm about over this. It's like, yeah, I feel you. But just the nature of it. There were awesome guys though. You're twenty two minutes in. Twenty two minutes. One of our favorite things to do since then is to take the kids to the game over at Christmas time. We didn't go this year because I was prepping for this show, but we have a good time there. There's a fellow named Katie Wildlife Party. He says, congrats on the South Southeastern Expo. Best of luck and enjoying your live feed. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We're kind of, we're going to be, you know, we're going to have fun down there, but at the same time, like, I'm, I'll be glad to get back to my studio and have this whole thing over with. I think everybody will. It's, uh, it's a lot of prep work. Um, I've pretty much worked for this show exclusively in some form or fashion since about July. So <clears throat> it's a lot of work. There's a lot of lot that goes into it. Um, a lot of marketing, a lot of interviews, a lot of stuff that you do to promote it that a lot of people don't see. In addition to actually, you know, obviously I've got to paint the stuff and I've got to be ready for that too. So. It's been a big push on all fronts, and I think everybody will be glad when it's over with. But I feel like the hard part's done. Wrestling with this male, he kind of looks like a big fat turd. He needs to have a little bit more shape to him.
someone on YouTube asked if there's any suggestions for Photoshop classes or tutorials uh, for designing the paintings like you use. I know it's ironic and it's not a very good answer without looking at YouTube. <laughs> there's a, uh, you know, I, I learned pretty much, my first career was a, as a graphic designer. So I literally made a living in Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator. And I learned pretty much everything just by, by doing it, by working in it. And you just kind of have to jump in. Um, we didn't even, even in college, you know, their approach was that you would learn it as you were assigned projects in it. So even in school, we didn't have any like quote unquote Photoshop classes or um, InDesign classes. They just figured that if you got assigned a project, you would learn learn the, pre, the, the program as you win. So really, you know, you need to understand like clipping masks, um, how to clip stuff out, how to tweak color. Um, but as far as how I use Photoshop, I really use it to just work out compositions more than anything. I don't, <clears throat> I don't rely a lot on reference photos. Um, you know, one of my favorite artists, Greg Beecham, he always said, don't ever be a slave to your reference because, you know, deer, turkey, wild animals, they move around a lot. They take bad photos just like people do. And what you really need to learn is the anatomy of that animal you want to paint and then use a photo to help you support that. But if, you, if you're painting strictly from reference photos, you're, there's always going to be gaps in your work. You know, you might not, might not be able to see see how a leg works or, or, or see, you know, how an animal moves or relates to its habitat. That really needs to come from firsthand knowledge because eventually you're going to run into a spot where the reference photo is wrong and you need to paint it accurately and you need to be able to understand that. So all that to say, I use Photoshop really to work out my compositions more than Anything else? Because when you're using Photoshop, you can move that stuff around quick. And you can flip a canvas horizontal. And you can do a lot of things that would take days in a studio to to handle. You can make mistakes really quick in Photoshop and fix them.
question was, someone asked, how many commission pieces do you do in a year? None. <laughs> um, I just don't, I don't take on any commissions. Um, you know, a lot of what I have done over the years, <clears throat> even as self-employed, is, is client work. I'm doing work for other companies and I tend to have enough bosses as it is. And I just have really kind of kept my fine art studio work to myself where I don't really want anybody telling me what to do. So I haven't taken on any. Um, that's not to say that I won't in the future, but um, just like I just like some of the freedom of when I go into my studio. You know, I paint what I want, when I want to paint it, how I want to paint it, and I don't have to get that approved by anybody. And I like that because the reality is the rest of, of what I have done for the past decade has been nothing but approvals for the most part. One of my old turkey hunting clients, Dusty, he's live. It's pretty cool. But uh, somebody asked if you've ever painted any axis deer. Um, no, I haven't. That's one of those things, you know, as I, as I paint more, I'm sure I'll, I'll branch out more. Um, uh, you know, the go-to is to paint deer and turkey and you know, whitetail deer and turkey because there's, you know, there's obviously a bigger audience for those species. Um, but I really would like to paint some more. The other thing is I really try not to paint anything I've never hunted before. <clears throat> and I just, I've never hunted axis deer or anything before. I don't, I don't know that much about them. And so... It's kind of like going back to the, the photo about the reference. If you don't have firsthand knowledge of what you're trying to paint, you're going to get yourself into a bad position eventually where you know, you're going to paint something the way a photo looks, but it's not going to be accurate to the animal. Um, so I just, I just haven't done it yet, but one day. You've had hundreds of people on here. Yeah. Everyone wants to see what Ryan Kirby Art's up to. <laughs> Just don't get the camera too close to this painting because I feel like this is a freaking turd right now. <laughs> That's why we're quick drawing now ah, before seaweed. It. What's that? That's why we're quick drawing now before seaweed. This is strictly practice, Ryan. And you know me, I. Don't talk while you paint. I cannot talk and paint at the same time. <laughs> hey, you're stepping outside your comfort zone. I can't. I can't do anything. I, I'm not a multitasker at all. But this is it's been cool. I like hearing what people have to say. There's a there's a wildlife photographer that I, I follow. His name is Lance uh, Kruger. He's on. Oh yeah, man. I know Lance. He films a lot. He takes a lot Lance. of his deer photos for. Well, this has some freaking awesome. Uh, I mean, he's got great turkey photos too, but his deer stuff is is ridiculous. Lance has done more covers for magazines than probably anybody I know. Man, he's done a lot of stuff.
bee hunting, so Lance's deer photos are second to none. They're freaking amazing. I I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I kind of know. It's just it's just like anything. It's just like time, and he's got to spend a ton of time in the blind. He's got to, you know, he's got to be on the road a lot. There's no real, no easy way to it. But Lance, way, said, hey, Lance, said, Lance said, hey, Ryan, thanks for the kind words, guys. The way, um, it's hard to get a deer to do what you want it to, like posing and stuff, and some of his... Some of his poses are like, dude, how did you even get that? And then, you know, you've only got a split second of that deer in that pose before he's gone. And uh, if you take a blurry photo, you're screwed. <laughs> you know, you missed it. So you got to, it's a lot. It ain't easy. If it were easy, everybody would do it. Thirty minutes in. But I learned a lot laying out magazines for the for the Turkey Federation. I worked with a lot of those guys. Um, I didn't didn't work with Lance because we didn't we obviously didn't need a lot of deer stuff. But um, you learn, man. A good photographer helps a lot when you're laying out a magazine cover. When you're laying out pretty much anything because. You know, going back to the Photoshop question, I learned a lot about Photoshop by working with not very good photographers and having to fix photos and stuff. And man, when you get a good photographer in there, it's like a dream come true to have something that's in focus and got a good composition and, and all that. There's like 30 some new people who join if you want to like go back through just explain brief like what you're doing okay um so for anybody new i'm i'm um signed up to do quick draw at the southeastern wildlife expo next weekend which is basically where artists have an hour to finish a painting to start and finish a painting in front of a live audience and uh, we're testing out. We're going to go live for that next week, next Friday at 3 o'clock um, Eastern. And we are just doing some prelim work just to try to get the kinks worked out in um, some of the video stuff, make sure we can do it. But also, I usually try to do a warm-up painting um, ahead of the show where I'll, I'll paint my quick draw. Um, get a feel for it, have a little bit more experience so that when I'm up there painting in front of everybody, I know a little bit about where I'm going, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to be different. Uh-oh, uh -oh. my kids just got home. This will be proof that this is actual live and not recorded. Ah, let him come in. I don't care. 
<laughs> you know, the whole reason I'm doing this is to be prepared for distractions. And there's no more distractions like having your kids, your six year old and three year old, bust into here. Hey, we're on uh, Instagram and YouTube Live right now. So. Cool. Well, they're all excited <laughs> about the uh, dogs. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, especially now that Trigger's here. Oh, Brooklyn has lost her mind. Is Brooklyn feeling better? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, she seems to be. Okay. I'll come back out and check on her in a minute. Okay. Thankfully, Zach's dogs are here because to Brooklyn, I am chopped liver compared to those dogs. Those are the only things that matter. And one thing I do always like to do when I draw and sketch is paint for a little while upside down simply because um, it gives a fresh perspective on stuff. I'm kind of I'm wrestling with some of the composition on this deal and looking at it fresh like this just gives me a little bit of extra perspective on where I'm off. One thing I know I want to do differently is I did not do a very accurate sketch on this. And I knew that going into it. I just kind of threw something in. <clears throat> and a lot of times a, a painting can be like building a house. If you don't have the foundation square, it's not going to turn out right. You got to make sure you got to get that stuff right from the ground up. And if I have any issues with my sketch or composition, that stuff isn't going to get better by continuing to paint. And so uh, that's one thing I'm definitely going to fix for the final. Lance said, it's interesting to see you paint with the turkey stick. <laughs> he said, what's that about? That, well, a lot of artists use, it's called a mall stick, I believe. And it really, it's, it's basically helps me stay in my hand. So I can hook it on the top. I can put weight on it with this hand and steady it. And then I rest it on this hand. It gives me something stable to rest. And those sticks are pretty common with artists, especially on big paintings. And especially with oil painters, because you're painting wet on wet, you can't smear it. But um, I saw a guy one time that had an antler um, for his hook. And I thought, that's cool, man. I'm gonna, I should do a turkey spur. So this is an Osceola, and it had pretty long spurs on it. And... <laughs> I guess it's more of a con conversation piece now. Everyone comments on it. Everybody comments on it. 
And the funny thing was, I didn't think about this, but I did a, it's all busted up. I need to, I need to re, redo it. But um, I painted a lot of things. There comes a the dog. <laughs> I painted a lot of that in New York for Yeti. And it was one of those deals I had to fly in one day, paint for the event, and fly out the next morning. And I really didn't think about it at all. Uh, but I had to pack all my stuff and carry on. <clears throat> and I packed this thing with me. And the dude in TSA looked at me and just didn't even know what to think when he pulled that out of my carry on. Of course, I almost forgot I had it, like a pocket knife or something. I'm kind of stumbling and telling him, you know, what it's for, what I'm doing, where I'm going, and, you know, didn't really go all that well, but he let me through. He definitely thought I was going to try to take somebody on a little plane with this thing. Also, that same trip, I had to go to the bathroom and dump out about <clears throat> eight bucks worth of oil paint because the tubes were larger than eight ounces. That was awesome. My name is Jeff, said I love your work, and I have a print in my man cave. Cool, man. Which one is it? <laughs> what are you doing? Huh? Well, I well, I got a treat. You got a treat? Where? Yeah. From when I eat when I ate. Where'd you get a treat at? This is Brooklyn. Can you tell you know this is YouTube, that camera? It's YouTube. Can you wave? No. <laughs> Don't want to be on camera, do you? Just a uh, growth maturity. Oh, cool, man. It's been our number one seller uh, for years now. It's been a popular one. Oh man, these it's tough. I know these cardinals just from what I'm noticing. You know, there's not a whole lot of structure to them. And I can tell 
by looking at them, these are going to be one of those animals that they come to life when you put the eye in there. Right now. Here, 52 minutes in. 52? Tell them why you picked the Cardinals, just as far as they can use your palate and all that. Well, you, you obviously don't want to do something that has a ton of detail. <clears throat> and you, you want something that is pretty bright, pretty bold, because, you know, I'll be painting this live. Uh, there's like a hundred artists. I don't know how many people there. There'll be a few hundred people there, but not everybody's going to be able to, you know, be right there. They're going to be 20, 30 feet away. So, you know, I want to paint something that, that has enough um, larger, bolder shapes and enough contrast that people can see it from a distance. Um, it's also going to be auctioned off on stage and you want people to be able to see everything from a distance. Um, and, you know, usually I get up, they, they, they want the artist to say something about their work, what the title is, all that kind of stuff. And it's usually around Valentine's Day, so I'll probably say something about it. these two being lovebirds. Everybody coming out of COVID, like some of these people, like my brother and his wife, they've they've had kids at home for a, a lot of the time. And I don't know how people do it, man. A lot of times when that studio turns into a zoo once the kids get home, they're coming in and out. I don't know how a lot of these people did it. During the pandemic. So, um,
One thing I probably should have brought in earlier is a pile of knife. And I found over the years it can add a lot of, about a variety, a lot of interesting texture. Some drama with you all. Are we still good? Yes. Okay. We, um, you know, typically we would just pack my truck up for Kim Sequoia, but I've got about three times the amount of art this year for the show. And so we actually rented a, a U Haul trailer to pull or pack everything up in there. Okay, let's go find the kids. You like being on YouTube for what? Time we got. We're 59 minutes in on the live, uh -oh. but but you didn't officially start painting until. That's where at Seaweed they have, um, they've got a dude up on stage on front and uh, he'll like call out the time left. And you can just like feel the tension in the room, like everybody's starting to freak out, like, oh, I haven't even painted the eyeball yet. I haven't haven't done this yet. I haven't done that yet. That's when everybody really starts slapping paint around. <laughs> Trying to get ready. I'll jack that all up. Yeah, that's nasty. I screwed that way up there. <clears throat> but that'll be a good learning experience. <clears throat> so then at Seaweed, what we do is take that thing off and um, pop it right in the frame, and then it goes up for auction <clears throat> in front of the show. And usually it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, people like one thing that I've learned over the course of, of doing it is you're you're there as an artist you're more there for like entertainment value so you're not like everybody knows it's hard to crank out an original in an hour <clears throat> in front of everybody so people realize like they're cool about it they think it's cool that they could buy something that they just watched get creative in front of them um, they really enjoy that aspect a lot of times you'll have a fun auction where a couple people will be going bidding back and forth against each other and the crowd will get into it and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. I'm glad I started doing it. I've done it almost every year since we've been going. Um, and, and not all artists work that fast. You know, some people's style is more detailed with acrylic paint and layers and stuff like that. So there's not, not everybody in the whole field would could or would want to do it. So you really just have to realize you're there for more of an entertainment value and kind of a fun event. Just have fun with it. So anyway, if there's not any more questions, we'll sign off and uh, come see it live in uh, next Friday. Charleston Place Hotel, I believe it's 3 p.m. Eastern. 
um, for the Southeastern Wildlife Expo. But thanks to everybody that joined. Do the thing I'll shut this down in a while too. Cool. I'm definitely gonna have to have a better plan. Guess how many people need, guess how many people need that? I don't know. 350. Really? That's cool, dude. That is cool. That is cool. You don't have to be that.